person. Yeah. So yeah. the American Death Triangle, as you should recall from yesterday, is a method of rigging anchors and rock climbing. And it is very faulty. It's a bad way to do it. And uh, her anchor there is made on a couple of old pitons. I imagine she didn't just place them. Um, pitons are these slivers of metal that you hammer into the rock. And uh, the, anyway, so she's just, I guess, found this anchor here, which by the way, if the climbers in the room should know, you should never just use webbing or this, this nylon that you find on the rock because the, the sunlight deteriorates it and um, it's very common for the stuff to just break. I'll tell you a very exciting story about that later. Ooh. But um, So if you just loop a piece from this one, it's kind of hard to see, but can you see it? that little uh, piece of metal there sticking out of the rock? Yeah. yeah. There's a hole in it. The webbing is looped through there. It's, it's this piece of cord right here. It goes through this one, then down through the just, you can just see her carabiner. Ah, don't do it. And then back up to there, and there's, so it's just looped around in this triangle. And it's commonly called the American Death Triangle. And we are going to go back over to this excellent apparatus and talk about why it is called the American Death Triangle. Say as much. Okay, so. That's cool. What I have here is a scale. I think it's because the and string is wiggling just a little. It registers about 10 newtons when I hang this, all these masses off of it. Okay? And so basically, this is the exact arrangement of the American Death Triangle. Imagine that that's one of the anchor points. It could be a piton, it could be a bolt, it could be anything. This is another one. And then, so this is, this is simulating uh, our climber, our climber hanging on the triangle. And so this should read 10 newtons. It does, in fact, read 10 newtons. Right now, it's not so bad, right? Well, I mean, it's kind of bad. It, it, each anchor point is feeling 10 newtons of force. Um, and presumably, you've looped this through both of them to try to sort of distribute the force between them so that they don't both feel the full load. But they're but feeling the they full do. load. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, it could be worse, right? Um, it could be much worse. Now, it turns out that basically how far these things are apart, are apart, or really the angle that's made right here, is what's important. And if we use the much shorter, if we use a, a shorter piece of a string having the same weight on it. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, so now almost double. It would be better. It would actually be better to just just attach yourself to one of them than to use both in this situation. Jeez. Yeah. So that's not very good. Um, oh yeah, okay. I can't remember which one of these I made these vector arrows for, but um, we can sort of get at what's going on here. So we've got the tension represented, the tension in the string represented by the, the red arrow. And of course, the, the, the resultant, the result of that is you take, remembering the tail-to-tip method of vector addition, we'll take the tail of one of these vectors, stick it on the tip of the other vector, and it should point in the same direction as this string, right? You see what I'm doing here? Mm -hmm. yep. Some vector addition. And then hopefully from your angle that looks, oh, about right. I've got it angled up, maybe too much. Does that look about parallel to the string? Um, a little up. Yeah, yeah a little up. Good. That's okay. perfect. And then we've got the resultant, which is 
Well, something like that. So that's what causes that's the what this huge is. Yeah. tension. So I wanted to the offer double. I wanted to offer this as an A credit if someone is interested um, exploring different anchor rating methods and then actually working out the math drawing the free body diagram of each part of the system, uh, the bolts, drawing the free body diagram, setting up coordinate systems, you know, resolving the forces into components, and you can actually come up with some equations so we can measure these angles, plug them in, measure in the force exerted, or plug in the force exerted here, and then see if your, uh, if your theory agrees with your experimental results up here. And we could do it for a whole bunch of different ranges, or, uh, types of rigging methods, and so we can talk about those. Is anyone interested in that? Yeah, that sounds cool. I think that sounds cool too. Okay. It could maybe be a team project too, if you want to work as a team. Um, so there's a couple more things. Do you have a really long piece of rope? I do. String? I do have a really long one. Sweet. Um, so, now I want to see so, yeah, when actually it turns out that when this rope gets really long, there's going to be. Same thing, 10 newtons exerted here. Uh, it's actually slightly less than 10 newtons mm -hmm. now. And it turns out that as this gets longer and longer, the distribution of the force gets better and better. Um, but I, the floor is in the way, so we can't really push this much more. And, and the, the equivalent is moving these two closer together, because it's this angle, ultimately, that matters. Um, and eventually, if you move them close enough together, they'll be right on top of each other, and then it would be like you had one. So. Right, 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 which would be ideal. Yeah. And, and you'll never actually achieve that, but you can get really close. And uh, this situation, Grace and Holly probably know from their climbing expedition in Arizona, um, when you rappel, oftentimes you just take your rope and link it through the two anchor points and you just rappel down. Effectively, it's a gigantic American death triangle. But, the, but it doesn't really matter because the anchor points are close together. Usually they're somewhere around this far apart. And then but by the time you put your weight on the rope, you're usually farther than this from there. And those anchors are even closer together. So you get good distribution of the force on each bolt. And the farther you go down, actually, the better it gets. Um, so I, I always actually used to be really afraid of repelling because I thought, I'm making an American death triangle. And then last night, when I was here up late putting this together, it's, I suddenly realized that everything was going to be okay.